Hello, uh, it's John Heaton. Today I'm going to review the 1973 Dylan album, uh, this one, which is uh, one of his less, less distinguished efforts, should we say. Uh, was not even released with his permission. The record company put it out after he jumped ship and moved to Asylum, which was David Geffen's new label. He was only there for Planet Waves and Before the Flood, and then he returned to CBS. But anyway, CBS was so annoyed, they put out this album against his wishes. And it just consisted of a load of outtake, rejected outtakes from, self from New Morning mainly and Self Portrait. And as a result, it got slammed by the critics. Um, it only got to number 17 in the US and it didn't chart in the UK. But the, and it's also two months less than two months before the release of Planet Waves. So one could say trying to sabotage that new album by releasing it so within such a short period of time as the first album on Asylum. But the fans were not fooled by that because Planet Waves got to number one in the US and number seven on the, in the UK. Admittedly supported by the band, the tour that Bob was going on with the band Before the Flood, which became the Before the Flood album. That helped uh, Planet Waves considerably. But So this album, uh, as I say, the first seven tracks are from New Morning Sessions and the last two are from Self Portrait, April 69. And mostly cover versions, in fact all, all cover versions. Um, I'll show you what the Ultimate Music Guide thinks. Uh, they're a bit misguided in the Michael Watts in the Melody Maker says it might be forgivable if a spoof was intended but his serious intent is plain and it only opens him up to ridicule diminishing his artistic stature instead of humanizing his superstar myth well this was not intended as an album this was released against his wishes so serious or otherwise I think Michael Watts has got it wrong because um it wasn't intended as a spoof, it wasn't intended as a serious album. These, these were all rejected outtakes. And uh, one can see in most cases why they were rejected, in, in, to be perfectly honest. Um, I'll come back to the Ultimate Music Guide. I just want to go through the tracks quickly. I just want to say I view this album very much in conjunction with the other, these other albums of the same period, starting with Nashville Skyline, which came out in the spring of 69. And then you had Self-Portrait, the double from 1970, and then New Morning, which came out in the fall of 1970. So those, Self-Portrait was a double, so you got four albums released over that two-year period, and this album is on top of that, and uh, rejected stuff, so one can imagine he'd probably used up most of the good stuff on those four, on those four records right there, and, and that is the case. Um, this is uh, subpar Dylan, but as I say, not intended for release. Um, so it's a 33 minute, 22 second album. And it starts off with a traditional song, Lily of the West, which starts off in pleasing fashion in the verse, not bad. And then the female backing vocalist, or they're not even really backing vocalists, they're kind of joint lead vocalists. And they're way too high in the mix. I, I suspect someone at CBS rather cruelly turned up the volume of those singers because they're very much in your face and they get in the way of the, not just this track but most of the album to its detriment and it's not the case Dylan's used female vocalists on many an album to great effect on Desire with Emmylou Harris um, on Street Legal um, and Slow Train Coming and Saved to wonderful effect. So it's not the case that I'm against female backing vocalists, but on, on here, they're, they're way too high in the mix. Um, can't Help Falling In Love, a cover song written by George Weiss, Hugo Peretti and Luigi Creature. I think I've pronounced that right. Um, it's uh, a famous song, but I've heard better versions than this. This is not particularly distinguished at all. Another traditional song, Sarah Jane, listening to it the other day in preparation for this, did nothing for me, I'm afraid. Female vocals all over the, all over the shop. Um, Ballad of Ira Hayes, written by Peter Lafarge. Uh, compared to the, you know, the Ballad of Judas Priest or 
Um, you know, the, the ones from The Battle of a Thin Man, from Dylan's own pen, this is nothing to write home about at all. Um, pun not intended, and, and it's very undistinguished. Mr. Bojangles is a nice song, opening side two, written by Jerry Jeff Walker. But, for example, contrast this version. This is the back cover, by the way. And a rather ghoulish front cover. Someone's just got a load of paint and painted over Dylan's head, which is rather strange. Uh, compare Dylan's version to Mr. Bojangles to Harry Nielsen version of the Harry album, 1969, and where his voice suits the song like a glove and sings it beautifully. D Dylan kind of does a rush version and doesn't really seem to care much about the, his delivery of this song. But then again, it was rejected, so why the hell should we be uh, allowed to hear it? And I think that's the case for most of these songs. Um, just to continue going through the tracks, and it doesn't get much better. Big, Ye Big Yellow Taxi is a great song from Joni Mitchell, but Dylan does it, does it no favours here. Sarah Jane, another traditional song, does nothing for me. Lily of... Uh, sorry, have I... So the order of the songs on here is, is misleading because uh, Sarah Jane already came on side one. Um, a Fool Such As I comes after Big Yellow Taxi and was made famous by Elvis, written by Bill Trader. And quite a jaunty version, one of the better tracks on here from the, you know, the early self-portrait sessions. And then Spanish Is The Loving Tongue, written by Billy Simon, Charles Badger Clark. Um, different version from the B-side of w Watching the River Flow but not distinguished, not a good end to the album, I'm afraid. Um, so the essay in Ultimate Music Guide written by Luke Torn um, is reasonably fair and concludes, in the end though, Dylan remains suspiciously close to irredeemable, meaning the album, a subject for morbid curiosity for completing one's collection for the newly Dylan faithful to investigate in lieu of maybe saved or knocked out loaded. Well, that's a fair enough sentence, apart from the fact that Saved is not one of the weak links in Dylan's canon, whatever people might tell you. Um, despite its religious overtones, which put, tend to put off many people, it's a fine album, and it's head and shoulders above this. I don't know how to describe it, but uh, it's, it's not, there's not much. And, and it, that was proved that it was not much, because there's nothing wrong with releasing outtakes. After all, Dylan, throughout his career, People have accused him of leaving stuff on the cutting room floor, such as the Infidel Session. Mark Knopfler complained that the album would have been much better had he included Willie McTell and Foot of Pride and, and uh, Tell Me and stuff. And that's true to an extent. Um, so those songs have seen the light of day, and as have a lot of Dylan's outtakes on the so-called bootleg series. And this period is very well documented in the bootleg series through another self-portrait which has 35 outtakes from uh, the New Morning and Self-Portrait Sessions and is just rich in quality and way above the quality of this. So that just goes to show if CBS had been serious about putting out a, an album of any decency, they could have trawled the archives a bit better than they did and come up with, um, with nine songs of stunning quality because that Another Side of Self-Portrait is one of the very best in the entire bootleg series. and the. Nashville skyline, John Wesley Harding period is represented very nicely by this this um, volume, and I just wanted to show you this because I picked it up on vinyl the other day, and it's got a nice touch which was not on the CD, which was this postcard written uh, from George Harrison to Bob Dylan here. You see, it's written on the three Savile Row, London W one. Um, address. Dear Bobby, thanks for National Skyline. It is beautiful. Love to you all, George Harrison. I think that's absolutely brilliant to see that he was writing to Bob congratulating him on, on his latest album. Um, what have I got to say? I just wanted to mention when Dylan moved to David Geffen's label, people said, um, sorry, when John Lennon released Double Fantasy on David Geffen, he said, well, he's an unknown guy and I didn't want to sign with a big record company. Well, it's ironic that David Geffen in his, in his time managed Bob Dylan, albeit briefly, John Lennon, albeit briefly, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Peter Gabriel, Elton John. So nothing particularly small about the David Geffen uh, record company. Uh, anyway, go back to this. So I think it, a better way of trawling through the archives um, 
This album is not a complete disaster, and if you're a Dylan completist, you need to listen to it. But uh, in my view, the, the archives or the unreleased material, although this is officially part of the Dylan canon, um, the, the kind of stuff left over from the main albums, which this should have been, is far better served by the official bootleg series because that's pretty much endorsed by Bob. I'm not sure if he goes through every track and checks everything, but I think he's behind the releases. It, seems, it appears to me that way. It's not uh, being put out against his wishes. And uh, they're on volume, what are they on now? I think they're on volume 15, coming up to 16, and there's still a lot of albums he hasn't done the, the treatment on. So it's, it's the best archives series out of bar none, out of anyone. Um, so this is probably along with Knocked Out Loaded, the, weak link in, the weakest link in the whole Dylan canon. But uh, as I say, if you're a fan, check it out. If not, then probably give it a miss. And uh, if you want something from this period, pick up Nashville Skyline or, or Self Portrait. Or New Morning, any of those three. You can't really go wrong. Nashville Skyline probably gets the nod out of those three. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Doesn't matter if you didn't agree, not important. Um, we'll see you next time.